Uh, today we're going to be playing Dustmorn, the new set from uh, from Magic the Gathering. And we're trying in Pioneer. The cards that are new for the deck that I want to shout out specifically, because we have quite a few. Uh, we're going to go over some of the new and some of the old ones. Um, but let's start with the reason why the deck exists. So Optimistic Scavenger. A one-drop creature with Eerie, and Eerie says whenever an enchantment you control enters, and when you fully unlock a room, put a plus one, plus one counter uh, on target creature. And so, basically, Optimistic Scavenger, while it's not an enchantment itself, says whenever you play another enchantment after it, you will get to buff it or another thing, because it can target itself with its ability. The enchantment that is, like, specifically good with Optimistic Scavenger is going to be Hardened Scales, a one mana green enchantment that many of you are used to seeing. Uh, that says whenever one or more plus one plus one counters are placed on a creature, it puts two or puts an extra one. And so uh, when you play hardened scales as your second play after you play Optimistic Scavenger, you get to double the counters on it, uh, and then or you get to play two counters on it, and then every enchantment you do after that is double. You know, just on and break for the Optimistic Scavenger's ability. Eerie also functions very similarly to an old ability called Constellation. It just says whenever an enchantment enters a battlefield under your control, you get to trigger it. And while Eerie and Constellation are very similar, we're not playing any rooms, so they're functionally the same in our deck. Another card that doesn't have Eerie or um, uh, Constellation, though, but it does have a very similar ability it's from Neon Dynasty Kamigawa, is Generous Visitor. Uh, this one green, one one spirit says whenever you cast an enchantment spell, put a counter on plus one plus one creature, or plus one plus one counter on target creature. So, very similarly to Optimistic Scavenger, uh, where one says enter, one says cast, you're essentially casting all your cards in this deck anyway, so you're not really losing out. And you essentially get eight one drops that do the same thing, and eight one drops that function very well with hardened scales. Uh, to note, when you cast the Hardened Scales with Generous Visitor, it will only put one counter because it's a cast trigger and Hardened Scales is not in play yet. Uh, and so keep that in mind when you're playing this IRL. Um, we have some new cards that I want to talk about that are coming alongside the Optimistic Scavenger in the deck. The first is going to be Shard Mage's Rescue. For one white, you get a Flash Enchant. Plus one, plus one. And then if you played it this turn, the creature gets Hexproof until end of turn. And so while the Flash plus one, plus one ability is fine, you got to think of this card way more like a God's Willing or Lauren's Escape, where you're playing it as a piece of protection for your important creature. Uh, we're going to be juicing our creatures pretty aggressively in this deck, and I think that uh, something to protect the more important ones is good, or the larger ones is good. I'm somewhat curious if we should be playing some sort of eva evasion, like um, Audacity to give Trample, and that's something that's going to be on my mind while we're playing, but we're going to have to wait and see how it feels. Uh, the other new card, Sheltered by Ghosts. This two-mana aura enchants a creature you control, and when it comes in, you exile a non-land permanent and opponent controls until this leaves the battlefield. Normally, that's pretty dangerous because uh, your opponent can just kill your creature at any time and get their thing back, but this specifically grants Ward 2. It also grants Plus 1, Plus 0, and Lifelink, um, and it's fairly cheap for the ability, so I think it's just a very strong card. Uh, we have four Innkeeper's Talent. While this isn't new, it's relatively new compared to the rest of the cards that came out in the previous set. Uh, it's been very nice with the uh, Valiant Creatures from Bloomborough, uh, but I think it's going to be great here because this is also a card that just works really well with Hardened Scales and Hardened Scales-like effects. Um, I'm curious if we should be playing one copy of the Ozolith. Uh, I, I forgot the sub name of it but it's like the green one ozolith uh which functions very similarly to hardened scales we could also maybe play ranger class ranger class is another one that adds counters makes a body is an enchantment um there's also a room that costs a white and one to make a one one glimmer and the glimmers are enchantments so it's two inch enchantment creatures or sorry two enchantment triggers uh and one and the other side of the room also works with hardened scales by putting plus one plus one counters on two different creatures so there's a lot of potential to work inside this shell uh, with all of the triggers upon enchantments, and we just don't have that many yet to uh, to really... Uh, we don't have that many reps yet to really see what's good and what's bad. So today is just mostly experimental. Um, an older card, Jukai Naturalist, makes all of our enchantments cost one less. Uh, then This makes Innkeeper's Talent, Spirited Companion, Sheltered by Ghosts, and our more expensive ones and sideboard cards. Uh, cost one less. Uh, Calyx 
is a, a constellation card that was printed semi semi recently, and it says. Uh, whenever enchantment enters, you put a 1-1 counter on target creature, so it functions similarly to Generous Visitor and Optimistic Scavenger, working very well with hardened scales. It says, whenever an enchanted creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may create a token that's a copy of a non-legendary enchantment you control, and you can do this only once each turn. So with Sheltered by Ghosts, you can put Sheltered by Ghosts on one of your guys, exile their blocker, attack, make a copy of it, and exile another thing. I think that that's a, a pretty powerful ability, and in general, I think Calyx is very strong in this deck, whereas I haven't seen him be very good yet. It, it came out of the vault from uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction, and so it hasn't really seen a lot of play and hasn't had time to see a lot of play. But I think that the addition of Optimistic Scavenger, Sheltered by Ghosts, uh, should certainly help it out. Lastly, we're an Eidolon of Blossoms deck. Uh, there's a couple different cards you can play that have a very similar function. Eidolon of Blossoms works great in multiples, um, it's great to make it cost cheap uh, or cost one less from Jukai Naturalist, and it just allows you to kind of do combo y style turns, which I really appreciate. Um, but it's very expensive and pretty slow, so I'm very curious if it's good or not. Um, I want to note that there is a, a very big increase in density of Light Paws and the Hexproof style decks running around at the moment because they're a great foil to Phoenix and other decks with tons of removal, thanks to Hexproof and Ward. And uh, and the newer additions of Shard Mage's Rescue and Sheltered by Ghosts, I think, are excellent in those decks as well. And so you're going to see maybe some more enchantment style decks crop up because of the, the efficiency of Sheltered by Ghosts and the protection granted by Shard Mage's Rescue while sitting inside the uh, shell of like an Aura's deck as opposed to God's Willing or Lorne's Escape, which is more geared towards uh, like prowess and heroic. Cyborg, uh, we have a, the mana base is pretty straightforward. I do want to talk about Valgavos Lair a bit, but just suffice it to say the Valgavos Lair, as far as I can uh, tell, is the only enchantment land that exists in Pioneer. Um, we have Urza Saga in Modern, but as far as like enchantment synergies are concerned, there are very few things that exist in the engine as potent as Valgavos Lair. And this is essentially our coming to play tapped artifact land from the affinity decks. And this is going to trigger our scavengers, uh, Calyx, Eidolon, and Generous Visitor. Or sorry, it doesn't trigger Generous Visitor, but it triggers the, the Enders of Battlefield ones. Um, it's also a dual land. It does enter tapped. It has hexproof, so it's hard to kill. Um, I really don't know if it's good or not. If people play Back to Nature, it's obviously horrible. Uh, but I do really think that the uniqueness of Valgavos Lair gives it a um, a reason to try it, for sure. Uh, this is based on a 5-0 list that someone's already uh, done. And um, we changed some sideboard cards, and we'll go over the sideboard cards now. The Besaju Who Endures, uh, along with one in the main, these are were not in the original list, but I think that they're important. There's a lot of High Noon style stuff going around, uh, Chain to the Rocks, things like that, and having a land that can bust up that stuff is good. Our original list, I think, had four dual land or four basics and uh, two Cave of the Frost Dragon, and I've cut the Caves of the Frost Dragon because I think that card is extremely weak. Um, maybe it's possible we should be playing Mutavault or something similar. Uh, because it allows us to have a creature that can put counters on. But the five mana Cave of the Frost Dragon activation is just far too expensive for my taste. So uh, keep that in mind as we play. If we feel like we have too many dual lands or our mana is too good, we can start to pair that back a bit and get some more creature lands into our deck. I don't think I want the Restless uh, Green-White land because we already have four Valgavos Slayer the Inner Tap. But something like Mutal Vault could, all, could be pretty good. Um, two Shaper Sanctuary. This is going to help protect us from spot removal. We are not a hexproof deck, and so Shaper is going to be a way for us to recoup some lost cards. It also is an enchantment, which is good, and we maybe should be playing more than two. Two Pick Your Poison, along with the Beseju and the Shelter by Ghosts, are great ways to answer opposing weirdo artifacts enchantments. Or Portable Hole. Uh, great against the aggro decks, but it is an artifact, so it doesn't have synergy with the rest of our deck. We obviously would rather have a, an enchantment that does something very similar, but Portable Hole is Portable Hole, and there's nothing really else to do about it. Two Deafening Silence. This is my addition. Because we have so many creatures in our deck, I think that we can play Deafening Silence as our hate card for Phoenix, and I might even play three. But I like the split of two Deafening Silence, two Rest in Peace for the matchup. 
And having two Daphne silencing it's like Lotus Field, I think, is good as well. Lastly, two Enduring Innocence. This is a card that I think might need to be played main deck. Um, we have enough creatures, I think, to fuel it. And I think that it's excellent as a magic card. I think it's going to be very strong with Collected Company. And uh, I think it could be really nice for this deck as well. There's also a chance that Eidolana Blossoms uh, should just be Collected Company. And we should just have a tilt towards creatures as opposed to like hardened scales and keeper's talent shelter by ghosts and shard mages rescue like if our optimistic scavengers and generous visitors are just getting triggered by enchantment creatures like spirited companion style enchantment creatures um it could be pretty sweet and it could be a way to make it during innocence truly busted um, i think the card is just very strong in general and so i'm playing two in the sideboard to be like a grindy anti rakdos card uh, because even if they kill it it comes back there is a significant increase in exile removal spells though right now, so um, the front side of it I don't think is as good because it can get exiled pretty easily, and so the back side won't come back. And it doesn't trigger on itself when it comes into play. There's also a chance Enduring Innocence is better than Eidolon of Blossoms, but I think Eidolon plus Jukai Naturalist just allows for some really disgusting turns, so we're just going to keep it as is. This is Enchanty Scales. Let's play a League. Okay, so this hand is a little slow, but we're going to keep Valgawa Slayer into Razor Verge Thicket. Opponent is Gigantha, so it might be that Rakdos stack, and we don't have a one drop. Oh, Rakus Theater, though? What is this? Might be like Jun Sack or something. Agathas. Okay, so it's the Rakdos Agatha deck. This one can be tough. We're going to do, I guess, green to start. And I'll probably play Spirit of Companion as our first play. We can't, this matchup can be tough, I think. But we have a way to, like, we have ways to grind. It's the tree stuff is actually quite good against our deck because we're grinding so hard. Have you seen Enduring Vitality plus Storm Splitter? Yeah, I saw it in a standard deck, and I think that's basically the right power level for it in standard. I don't think those two cards work that well together uh, fundamentally. But together they do a function like Splinter Twin. And if you play the three drop into the four drop, then you know every cantrip you play is gonna make another one and another one, another one. And I think once you play your sixth or seventh one, it, it kills. Uh the same can be done with Cryptolith Rites. Cryptolith Rites exist in Pioneer. Alright, so they take my spirit of companion. So now we have the talent, but we'll probably go ahead and play that unless we get it taken. All right, well, let's hope we draw something we can cast. Okay, not yet, but we can cast the next turn, or in a few turns to exile something. This also might need to be like an elf deck, but maybe not. Also, Constellation is in ETB, so maybe we should go up to 80 and be a Yorian deck. I actually think that that is somewhat worthwhile. All right, we're just going to play Calyx and allow it to trade because they're so low on resources. I just not, I didn't realize that this could target itself when it came into play. That's sick. It's like secretly way bigger than it looks. Uh, Adam Hart, Gil, thank you for the follow. All right, they're going to start by cracking the blood. They did not discard the tree, so I think we're doing okay. And this can't kill this, which is also sick. Fatal Push is the play. They got two cards left in hand, one card left in hand. All right, so now we just start to churn. We'll go Eidolon. And I will not offer a trade. And if we get to untap, we're going to do some seriously dirty stuff. But we have Shelter by Ghost and some other stuff to, to keep them in check. Fable, not a big deal. We'll use the Shelter by Ghost to exile the... Uh, token so we can attack. We'll gain some life. All right, so green, white. Uh, Naturalist is a, a sicko draw. And now we get to kind of just pop off. Uh, let's go Eidolon Protection. Exile the, the Goblin. We'll go Generous Visitor. And then we'll go Talent. Draw a card and put a counter on the Eidolon so we just gain a bunch of life. So 
so many little things going on here, but we basically get to turn the corner because of Eidolon, and all of their previous interaction is somewhat invalidated because of it. We can still just get combo killed here with discard tree, Agatha's something, something like that. Blazemire Verge, I think these lands are great. I'm excited for this one quite a bit. Ooh, I didn't realize that this got to draw a card when you have uh, nothing left. All right, so we can go, let's start with Calyx. So it's only going to cost two. We'll go, a uh, few kind of naturals can get bigger. Put another counter on it. And then we'll go uh, Spirit of Companion. Get this one juiced up some too. And then it'll interplay. We get a cast trigger and we get enters the battlefield triggers like crazy. Okay, and now we get to go Harden Scales, and this should just like really jack me, jack me up out of out of this world. Pretty good. Get to untap with Adelana Blossoms, Jukai Naturalists. Quite nice. So I do think this is a good portable hole matchup. I don't love the rest in pieces, and I don't love Shaper Sanctuary because they can just ignore me, and they will ignore me quite a bit. FOMO and Rakdos seems fun. FOMO is, I think it's just a great card. I, I'm excited to try it in more shells. So my main deck is so clean. The only things I can really think that can be cut are like uh, Shard Mage and Sheltered by Ghosts. In terms of, actually this is maybe a bad Jukai Naturalist matchup because they could just kill it so easily and it doesn't draw a card or anything when it enters play. Obviously it looked excellent there, but I already had Eyeliner Blossoms in play. And so Jukai, it's one of those cards that when you need to turn the corner and be really fast, it's good. But in longer grindy games, it's not very good. Shelter by Ghost also looked pretty good there, but I don't think it's that good in the style of matchup. It does stop Agatha's, but Agatha's usually cast on the same turn where they put a counter on to make a tree proxy. And so I have like, and I my idea is that these 11 are gonna be the ones that you cut most often against uh, anything. And then Eidolon is sometimes too slow for red. And these can come out against like red decks, like the more expensive cards. Um, I do like Besaidu kinda. I don't really know what I don't know how to sideboard this deck. I'll just be honest. So let's just play for like a grindy game. See if we can do something like this. Maybe leave in like two of the shard mages. Something like this. And then we just have cards that all kind of interact with their interaction. And they're just going to have a lot more interaction after sideboard probably. The portable holes, I just target everything. They're so good in, in these style of matchups. But shard mages rescue, while it can stop like a fatal push, I just don't know if that's very important. And so I don't really want to do it. Let's try this. Okay, we'll keep. All right, Path of Peril, immediately put in the graveyard. It means they either have another one or something. Okay, let's go Generous Visitor, and we'll go Generous Visitor into Hard Scales, uh, and then tap Valgaboss this turn. This doesn't trigger with Valgaboss, but I think that's okay. Okay. If I play something that pumps this, they're going to kill it, right? And if I play Hardened Scales pre-combat, they're 100% going to kill it. And so maybe, is there any universe where I do this? And this is going to maybe blow up their spot. 
to uh, protect this with extra counters. And it makes it so we don't get to Enduring Innocence a turn earlier, but I think it's okay. This also gives me a chance, I guess, to draw one of the other ones that uh, triggers. Weird. I think they're just path of, planning to Path Apparel me or whatever. All right, let's just go for Spirit of Companion. It'll get counters, and then it'll probably die. Um... I'm going to just play this on white. I think that they don't, even if they have spot removal, they're just like not going to play it because they're just going to kill these with a path of peril. That's my expectation here. And then I get to go shock enduring innocence and hold up shard mages to protect it from something that exiles. But this was like somewhat uh, predictable. All right, so now we'll go green for sanctuary. And I'll go, I'll play one enduring innocence here to. Um, if they go kill it, we'll draw a card and it comes back, but they probably just will ignore it. And then we have Portable Hole to stop their first creature or whatever. And then this will be actually pretty good against... Uh... It'll be pretty good against uh, the Goblin. All right, let's play this on white. If we get hit with a an extinction event on odd, it'll be I'll be pretty sad. But they've already gone through two path of peril. I don't know how many extinctions they have in there, seventy five and post con post uh, sideboard either. Why playing Valgal Slayer since Chinese but enters tap to sad? I agree. There, it triggers uh, two two of your three creatures that do that type of ability. All right, three, pre three Tree of Perdition in the Graveyard, but no Agathas just yet. I was expecting these to be attacked with spot removal more aggressively, but the way that it works against Shaper Sanctuary is that that only really happens when your opponent is out of juice. Or, like, they don't love targeting your things, right? All right, let's go Eidolon. We're going to draw three cards. I'm going to hit the um, Blood Tithe. And we get to draw a card with Idol on here. We'll do it on green since we're a little light on green. I'm going to not attack. We could have, I guess, killed this so we could attack. But I think the um, the Harvester being able to kill Idol on matters. And the extra attack here doesn't matter too much. But this is another reason why we're playing Valgavos because of Idol on. All right, so they're going to crack Blood Token. Even if they are able to um, to do the, the whole shebang with the Agathas, we're still at four. But we can certainly die. But we can also get Hardened Scales down and then maybe do Innkeeper's Talent stuff. Another Portable Hole would be nice. Yeah, there, there are a couple different cards for Valgavos Lair to be good. And I, I think it is good. Another FOMO. All right, let's start with Hardened Scales. All right, so let's get some lifelink going, I guess. So we can play Pathway Calyx, and then we can, if any of our creatures get through, we get to enchant them, and then we get to copy something.
So we can basically just force them to do some blocking here. And if they don't block correctly, they just die. And I think we go Calyx attack and then Shard Mage's rescue is the thing that gets them. And I don't think we can die very easily when we do that. They also have to do this before damage, if they block with it. All right, so let's go uh, Shard Mages here. And they'll swap before blocks, or before damage. So we'll go, I think they're just dead to the buffs though. And this is basically just hardened skill going animal on them. Um, I'm going to keep this hand because we're on the play, but without a one drop, this hand can fall apart pretty quickly. But we have Jukai Naturalist into double innkeeper's talent, so I'm pretty excited about that, actually. Is this on Moxfield? Yes. This deck can pull itself to 40% first blue white. I'm playing in DC. Well, I can't uh, speak for that, but. Let's see if Jukai gets to untap. If it gets exiled, we can go Jukai plus um, talent and put a counter on it. Val again. Okay, so it's it's just Lotus Field. So we should go um, Alex. And then we just were in a racing scenario, so. And I don't know if we can kill next turn, but we might be able to. Two talents to trigger these is pretty cool. They're gonna they have to just Archmage's Charm here to uh in order to like combo kill me next turn. I'm gonna just natural silver talent. Actually, nine. I think talent's actually eleven. I think this threatens lethal, so it just forces them to to do it. All right, so we have threatened the turn four kill against Lotus Field, and they can use Archmage's Charm maybe to. I guess that doesn't work. There's probably some disenchant they can do, like a Beseju. If it is Beseju, we get to play Naturalist post combat. But if their their plan was likely to do Archmage's Charm, make a Lotus Field untap, kill me. We have stuffed that by having double innkeeper's talent. Okay, they let me get a bunch of triggers though, and so they don't, and they also don't get to Lotus Field me, and they're at very low life total. Nine lives. Wow, that sucks. And this only, and this has hexproof. So nine lives as a new way. I, I don't know if there's like some other combo with this card. It's kind of annoying for our deck. It's basically just a huge fog. Unfortunately, it's hexproof, so Shelter by Ghost doesn't stop it. We'll do this one on white. And we'll attack with these, and then we're just going to try to, I guess, turn off their nine lives. It's going to take a little while. 
That's all they really need is time. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a good card. Um, you know, it's like a big fog effect or whatever. I just don't know if there's like some combo in their deck that I don't know about. If it's just like three mana fog for a couple turns, it's that's powerful enough. I wonder if there's like a a way to make people sack enchantments very easily. I do think Lotus Field is a horrible matchup for us. And if they have this nine live shit, I don't really know how we're supposed to beat it. I also think Lotus Field is quite horrible against the like Rakto stuff, but this might change everything. I don't know. Oh, yeah, pick your poison. That's true. Why? I mean, why are they playing this card if pick your poison's everywhere? I'm definitely bringing it in, I guess. We're probably dead here. If a source would deal damage, you prevent that damage. Put an incarnation counter. So this is a life? Okay, so this doesn't work. Yeah, we got some in the board. All right, so we're going to try to stop this thing. Exile target effect on enchantment. What are they targeting? The sheltered by ghosts? Sure. All right, so we'll put them up to seven counters. They're dead next turn if they don't kill me, but they have... Lear. So I'm probably dead. We'll see. Four cards in hand. They have four of the pages in the graveyard. They can start by casting it, but it's negative mana. Only one, but it's still negative mana. We really start to die against Lotus Field when they, uh, when they have two Lotus Fields in play. And usually they just have a, a copycat version. Okay, so they drew Thespian Stage, so now they can copy plus untap, and then all of their hidden strings and stuff are super broken. And so we're probably dead now, but they don't have they don't have a deterministic kill from just what's visible to us. Okay. They're making black. Usually that means they're about to ultimatum us. So we were pretty close. I mean, we threatened the turn four kill, and I think that it's important that we were able to do that. Um I'm gonna bring in some deafening silence, some rest in peace. And some pick your poison. And the Besage seems weak. And then I think Shelter by Ghost is pretty lackluster. And then like Eidolana Blossoms is kind of mid. And so maybe we want to Besage you over the third Eidolon. We could just get this out. Uh, Shard Mage's Rescue is actually pretty weak. I guess we'll just cut that instead. Bring in, uh, we can just leave Eidolon, I guess. They're going to have some stuff, but. Shard Mage Rescue protecting creatures is not really that important. Uh, Alright, opener looks pretty good. We'll keep. So we can start with Generous Visitor. It's because it's a cast, I guess. Maybe we should... Yeah, I think because it's a cast, we want to get it down before the other ones. And now if we draw, like, Valgavoth, uh, we can play this plus Valgavoth and Pump. That's kind of nice. Hmm. I guess I should probably just do this one to uh, spend my mana more efficiently, but I really wish I had another one drop thing to use. And so maybe we just need to tilt towards ones to make the one drops better as opposed to Jukai Naturalist to make the two drops better. But maybe it's just a healthy combination of both. It's fine. Someone's crying. Okay. We will use um, the Seiju to blow some stuff up.
All right, we'll go counter on the visitor. And then we'll get Eerie and we'll put a counter on the Jukai. All right, swing for six. Counter souls on humans. Uh, we have a lot of non-creature cards that I think might be troublesome. Strict Proctor is kind of a nightmare, but luckily we already have some pressure. Just gonna swing with all of them, put them to three. They can block here and it's fine. They might not even block. And now when, if they go to copy to and then untap, we can blow up the... Uh, the land that copies Thespian Stage. If they play another Lotus Field as their land with Trick Proctor, that could be tough for us. We did draw seven lands, which is not great. And if we win this game after drawing seven lands, on the play, that just means our one drops are quite good against Lotus Field. Which is, I think, just definitely just true. But Sage, you also nice if they have temporary lockdown as their sideboard answer. So Cavern on Spirits doesn't work against this. It does work with this. It doesn't work with this. It does work with this. The fact that it can't play both one drops on human, I think, is a huge reason why we can't do it. Players can't get counters. So this is going to exile this. It'll block here. We'll just keep holding. All right, so we're going to put them to two. We're going to make their confluence a bit worse, but I'm pretty sure they have Archmage's Charm to uh, exile this. Just now I realized this had lifelink. This is so much better than I thought. But a one counter deals damage. Okay, but they're still taking three, right? Unless I'm missing something. I don't understand. They could have exiled this and not died. I don't get it. Opponents seem like they're playing pretty good. All right. Uh, okay, this is a very slow hand. I'm just going to mulligan. Look for the one drops. Uh, this is an... I mean, this one's definitely faster. We're going to keep, but this is, like, not ideal. IQ for DC. I am Rosie. We're doing some testing. Been working a lot with my students. Oh, good draw, good draw. So Calyx is a good drop. If they just play Lotus Field here and sack two lands, I think I'm gonna win the game. Okay, so they're gonna not do that. They're gonna lock me down. So we'll go for Calyx, I guess. Solemnity. Okay, so my shit can't get counters. A bummer. Just so annoying. 
Love to draw Beseju or something similar. Uh, we'll try to put a counter, but it's just not going to happen. So I will play another Doggo. Just randomly playing against combo deck, which is bad for us. Did not realize that he was going to do that. Yeah, I know, Neasles. We play, We lost to that in game number one. I have some disenchants on my deck after sideboard, but right now it's not looking like they're doing so well. All right, so we'll harden scales. That does nothing. I just don't even know what to do, man. Freaking Lear, just being Lear. Just a normal guy. I need uh, some way to blub this solemnity so my cards work. Probably shouldn't have even played this. Maybe I just need way more disenchants after sideboard. I have two, four. I have, I have some. Surprised they, I guess they don't have anything good to Balagad recovery, but. <sighs> Every single card in my deck is just fucked by Solemnity, dude. This is so annoying. So my guess is they tutor? What land are they gonna go get? They get a creature to hand, I see. Good one. All right, so we're probably gonna get ultimatum tier. I imagine that we're just dead. But I mean, it's, I don't know, man. I've just like not seen anyone play Solemnity in a while and it's just straight up fucked up against our deck. I'm really not super stoked about how Generous Visitor works with Valgavoss Lair, and it's making me like Valgavoss Lair less. But I do think that... Okay, so we're playing against a Yorian deck. Probably some 80-card piece of shite. Um, anyway, I'm not super stoked on how it works, but I think it's okay. I think next turn I'll probably go... Maybe Generous Visitor tap Valgavoss Lair, and then we can go Naturalist plus Shelter by Ghost on the same turn. I think that that's fine. We can get this land down. I think playing natural next turn makes it so that we're unlikely to get full value out of it. Portable hole is fine, so we can unlock later. I'm not sure that I even want to, but we can. Maybe boarding this out last round was wrong. Okay, now that I drew Eidolon of Blossoms, though, I want to maybe just do this now and punish their, punish their portable hole on the one drop. If this gets untapped, we get to go visitor ghost get this back. We at the like very least. Leyline Binding. Let's go play this on green. So I go. Good shelter by goes to get back to Jukai, but I, I want to do like um 
like a big turn with Eidolon and stuff. And uh, we'll see. I'm not sure exactly how I want to sequence, but getting the Valgoss Lair in a play tap sometimes early is good. Plus, I think unlocking something under Binding when I have Eidolon in play already is kind of nice. Uh, they don't have a land. All right, so we can. I guess we can play this and Ghost the token. They only have one card in hand. I think that's actually pretty good. And that'll leave us the ability to Shelter by Ghost on it as well. All right, well, Shard Mage's Rescue on it as well. Put a counter here. And now even if my creature dies, it's okay, right? Because uh, mostly they're just so low, light on resources that I think giving them the extra treasure tokens is, is potentially bad. And when when we get to untap with Eidolon, I think we'll just be fine. I love that we can, you know, they can spend their whole turn like giving, trying to exile this so they don't take as much damage. They discarded no cards. They have two cards in hand, only three lands. They discarded no cards. And they didn't play land last turn. So whatever it is, is probably some sort of answer to this. Okay, so it was Besage you. And then the last card, I don't know what it is, but they buy Yorian. Maybe it's a sweeper effect of some kind, or definitely not a land. I right, so we'll attack for three, and then we'll go Eidolon, Valgavoth Slayer, and draw two. Another reason why I really like the uh, Valgavoths. And just no chat if you're playing against this. Oh, I missed a I missed a, a trigger. If you're playing against this IRL, uh, I'm gonna play this on white to protect the Eidolon. Um, you want to kill the Eidolon with a trigger on the stack because then they can play Valgavos to draw a card before you can kill it. All right, so this is going to flip. We don't have to worry about the Yorian too much. If they do some unlocking, we can protect one of them. And them flipping this is kind of gross, but I think we'll get to untap and just draw a bunch of cards thanks to Eidolon Shard Mages. All right, so my guess is they'll, maybe they just blink Reflection. But if they try to kill the Eidolon with the Binding, we get to draw a card. Okay, so they're just going to play around the Rescue. It's tough. All right, so let's go Valgavos on white. Draw a card. We'll go Companion, we'll draw two. Make this a five so we can start attacking through the uh, Yorian. All right, this is green. Let's swing up both. Now we can use um, Sharp Major Rescue to just buff in combat. And even if they kill it, we're very far ahead, so I'm pretty happy. And we get to draw another card. What's up, Taylor? Thanks for the 64 months, Nintendo 64 months. Maybe this was a bad attack. Because this can only make this a six with hardened scales. They're going to block here. This is like such a better blowout spot for me. Because we get to uh, shard mages here and pump here. And there's some chance we get a hit with a wrath effect here. But I mean, we just have so, so much material to work with, even if. 
even if our whole board gets swept, which is, I guess, not unlikely, but. Master Marshmallow, thanks for the 20 months. Appreciate it. Nick says five more months. Yeah, nice. All right, so I have to pay the ward on this. The shoulder bite goes, goes away, but we took a token with it on purpose, and that's that's why we took the token with it anyway. The generous visitor now also locked. Let's hope that they don't have an answer for this. All right, land is their last card. Uh, they're at 13. I guess they're just planning on chumping. Let's start with Falgaval Slayer. This will draw a card. Let's go for green. Arn Scales, good draw. Salty saying Nick coming in with that 13 months. Appreciate you, buddy. Okay, well, we didn't draw that much, so let's just attack with the Eidolon. Maybe we should be playing way fewer lands. But mostly I think we should just be playing Audacity. I think it's free-ish. Next turn we can go Eidolon draw two. Bagabas Slayer draw two. Beansock's a pretty good draw for them. Hope y'all are all doing well today, chat. This deck's pretty fun so far. I think there's a, a lot to think about in deck construction. I'm not even sure that just green-white is the way we should go. I'm curious if we should be doing like Curious Obsession type stuff because of how strong it is with the one drops, but that would require like a significant change to the mana, which isn't a huge deal, but it is something that we would have to do. All right, one, two, three, four, Eidolon. Let's draw some. I wonder if, if I know that Jukai Naturalist reduces the cost, and but I think that there's another one that does as well. Uh, and so I think, let's see, we go Calyx. And then it'll put counters on this one. And then I guess we'll just play Valgavos. We'll draw two. And we'll put uh, two counters here. And now we're threatening lethal with any two of our attackers connecting. And so they can't double block. And so they have to chump one. I don't know why they conceded. They weren't dead. Okay. Uh, I do like um, Pick Your Poison, Beseju, both pretty good. I don't love Enduring Innocence or Shapers because they have a lot of things that say Exile and they probably have a lot of Sunfall. Sheltered by Ghosts is solid. I mean, it's just a good card. I'm going to cut a land. I'm going to cut the Ganjo or the Beseju. And then we're going to cut... Maybe one rescue because they just have, I don't know, they have a ton of one mana removal, so it's just like hard for this card to truly be spectacular. But it did feel pretty good that game, just being able to hold it up to protect my stuff. Uh, maybe trim a talent. I'm not really sure how to sideboard, if I'm being honest. <laughs> yeah, we were talking to chat earlier, Scooter. I think maybe we should be a Yorian deck too because it works with all the constellation thingies. Eep? Eepies? Let's hope for the best. Let's check out Bant Enchantress from Nick. Entity Tracker. So this one's another one of the uh, draw card guys. Wizard of Glimmer. Chamber spells you cost one less to cast. Unlock, pay one last. Tilda. I think there's a white and one guy that does this though, right? And he has, I think it's got Constellation too, but I don't remember what it does. The Tilda? Number of permanents you control there, spirits or enchantments. I like the uh the front half. Overlord and overlords are not really that great in this deck. Size and champion's cool though. Maybe size and champion's the one. Other enchantment creatures you control get one one. Copy activated true. Okay. A lot of a lot of medium junk in there, but tends to be the case. Uh let's go. 
scavenger. And I think next turn I'll get down Innkeeper's Talent. And I'll, I'll probably play this on green. My hand's very green heavy at the moment. You know means a splash is free? Is that, how, is that what it means? I do like just playing 80 cards. I do love me a Yorian. I really just miss walking Ballista chat. That's what I miss. All right, I'm going to play this extremely soft and I'm gonna play a Spirit of Companion because I, I want a body on the table and we'll just, uh, I'm assuming that whatever I play here is getting killed by something. Smarted them to take it now because I was definitely going to pump the Spirit of Companion. Eddie Baya. Thanks for the six months. Says, thanks again for Rectos Callus List and the Cyborg Guys. Awesome. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I've been enjoying playing it. Uh, land would be nice. You like that? Alright. <clears throat> I am going to hold back my creature and force them to interact with it so they don't get free treasures. This is a, a weird trick that you can do against Fable sometimes where it essentially forces them to play removal on your creature. And so if your creature kind of sucks, like Spirit of Companion, I think it's fine. It, it's something that doesn't come up often because you want to be pressuring decks to play Fable pretty aggressively. But the way my hand is set up, I just I want them to like play their last removal spell to kill Spirit of Companion so they can attack and get mana. Uh, that way Calyx and Eidolon are less likely to get hammered. Mm -hmm. Enigmatic. This is bad news, bears. So if they if they sack binding and get a seven drop, I I think we can maybe do some stuff against it. Even if it's destroy my thing, like if it's uh, Titan of Industry, I'm not really that afraid of it. I'm afraid of Atraxa. Okay, that's what they have. So I don't think I cited out anything that can deal with it, uh, and I did bring in something that can eat it for one. So they are going to get to draw quite a few cards, one of which is the Chandra. All right, so they go for Chandra, Binding, Portable Hole, Interland Harbor. Payment, not Nihilus Presence, they took Binding. Something like this. Uh, let's go hard scales. I can make both of my creatures a seven here, I think. Okay, so let's attack with both. They can trade and chump, or just chump, and then we'll just try to do the same shit next turn. Force them into spots where they're constantly blocking, but they can just go binding hole and take out both. And then we have to try to rebuild and force lethal next turn, or the turn after. Yeah, Starfield Mystic was the one I was thinking of. Whenever an enchantment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, it gets a counter. Okay, but it mostly is just another cost reducer, which is nice. That is the one I was thinking of, though. Eddie Baya, thanks again for the six months. Uh, Knuckleblade says, I don't know if it's good, but Overlord of the Bailmark cursed perfectly into a three elder deep fiend while digging for Kozak's return. Okay, great. That card does seem like it just has suspend too and works really well in creature based decks. I hope it's really good. I hope they're all good. The impending creatures are all kind of messed up. 
All right, well, I know they have a Wicked Inferno in hand. And Hinterland Harbor. So they can sack this and give it back and go get Titan of Industry, I guess. That blows up something. We are dead here. It's fine. I'm going to play it out so I see more of their deck. Out of the Pantheon is a green one, does it says. Whenever you cast a chance spell, you gain a life. That one is a bit better, I think. That one will probably make the cut over the white one. But I'm I'm not even... Neither of them are uh, enchantments, right? So the, the trick is that Jukai is the enchantment, right? They killed an artist talent. That's funny. All right, so Calyx and Scavenger are going to enter here, and we're going to go make two kind of big dudes. And I think attacking here is loose. Because we can just die to the Titan. Although, I guess Titan can just blow up naturals too, so let's just quit. That's fine. Fable plus uh, Titan is too much, too much. All right, I'm just going to leave it as is. I think where we're at is pretty fine. Opponent had a very good good draw. Enigmatic in general is just a really, really powerful effect that creature-based decks have trouble with. I was really farming these decks last night when I was playing my uh, Blue-Eyed Oculus deck, which I might play again. Um, Man. I'm going to mulligan. I know that's not a horrible hand, but it's one that I just really need to uh, to get away from, I think. So this hand, I think I'm just going to put back Beseju. No. Maybe it's Jukai Naturalist. Maybe it's Pick Your Poison. It's probably Beseju. I will play this on white. There you go. The white wins an enchantment also? Okay, so maybe the white one is better. Starfield Mystic? If Starfield Mystic is an enchantment, it doesn't say so on, on the thing you showed me, though. All right, so let's go Jukai and hope that it untaps. If it does, we get to go, like, Companion Innkeepers. And if it gets exiled, we can uh, pick your poison, bring it back, and then play Spirit of Companion and draw. Beanstalk. Beanstalk is annoying, but it's not very good. Companion, draw this card. We're maybe going to get hit with Lockdown, but I, I think I want to incentivize Lockdown, so I think we're going to play Generous Visitor. Oh, God, Pick Your Poison doesn't... Oh, I messed up. Pick Your Poison can't kill the Lockdown. I'm in trouble now if they have it. Another Beanstalk? Okay. The Pick Your Poisons are looking worse when they have this. Tap land, tap land, tap land, anybody? Oh, no land. That's tough for them. Oh. Huh. I still think putting back the Beseju was right. But I'm not sure how right it is. This should this counter should definitely have gone on the Spirit of Companion. Because they had they already have a pretty big incentive to target the Jukais for cost reduction. Luckily it's Fable and not Anger of the Gods are similar. All right, so we'll play this for a green. I'm going to put a counter on the Spirit of Companion. And I'm going to swing with everybody. And I'll play uh, Valgavoss on green on this one. 
So we just have a second green for Blossoms. This is nine to put them to two. If they block, they might just be a little too squeezed on mana. We'll see. We do have the ability to unlock from temporary lockdown. Now that if they play it, it's going to eat their beanstalks. I didn't think about that. Inclusive Glimmer. Yeah, but it's blue-white. I don't really want to splash a third color. It's possible that um, blue-white is better than green-white, and Calyx is not that good, and the Generous Fizzer is not that good. But for me, the whole point is like hardened scales in this build. But I, I don't know. I feel like we're missing like Land Worlds, or we're missing like uh, some really messed up thing, like Oath of Nyssa, for example. Is an enchantment that might be good because it grabs everything and draws a card. So like Oath of Nyssa might be the card that's missing. But it doesn't grab enchantments, so it's like potentially awkward. All right, so they binding, they play Hushwood Verge. This does tap for white. Stay in the rocks, okay. All right, so we can uh, draw a bunch of cards here to win the game. Is that one of them? No. So this is just going to make them sack two up the beanstalks. I love that they have Reckoner Bankbuster in their deck after sideboard. Seems like such shit. Wish I had uh, drawn that a turn earlier, I guess. I don't know. They have new dual lines to help with Bant Mana. Yeah, but they don't work with each other. I don't think they're bad. The green one, like, you can't play the green one in, like, a deck with a bunch of blue-white cards, man. Okay, well, here comes Fires into Enigmatic. Okay, Enigmatic into a 7-drop. Atraxa we can beat, maybe. I don't know. I fucking hate playing against Enigmatic, dude. It's so stupid. I don't know. This Our draws in this league have not been the best. But I'm not sure if that just means the deck is a little lackluster. Weasel. Weasel. I don't think we can win anymore. We had like a window where we could kill them and we failed. Just keep growing this stupid thing up a bunch, I guess. All right, I will put a counter on it and attack. Uh, they can trade the Beza if they want. I'm pretty happy with that because our stuff's kind of weak. We have the green curiosity and keen sense, so we want to be strictly green-white. If we had more evasion, maybe. Yeah, that's not a bad idea, though. Audacity and Cure Obsession was missing. Yeah, but I think then if you do that, you should probably... We're, we should just probably end up being on uh, Light Paws. Overlord of the Bulger build, Bilger Bulbs, Bilger Bulbs. All right, quit. Go ahead. Um, uh, I'm going to call it quits there for the league, mostly because I think I figured out all I need to know before we make changes. Um, one and two start, not the best. Uh, Valgavoth's Lair was pretty interesting with Eidolon, but I think that without mana acceleration, playing lands that intertapped can be like really problematic. And so I'm kind of curious what the deck would look like if we maybe moved away from Hardened Scales creature stuff and instead moved towards like Wolf of Haven or Oath of Nyssa or Land of War Elves or something like that. And maybe I'm just like trying too hard to build Monogreen Devotion. And that's possibly a thing. Um, the uniqueness of Valgavos Lair being an enchantment land is not lost on me. And I think that it is it's quite interesting with some of the cards in this deck. And I am somewhat interested in its utility as an enchantment to be sacrificed a la shrapnel blast or um 
maybe alongside something like explore growth spiral where it's like a thing we can ramp into and trigger our stuff or play it on turn one tapped and playing it turn one tapped in a deck that's just like all one drops like we have so many one drop cards 12 12 permanents that means that like it's just really blocky in our opener only tapped for one color so maybe brush line is just better but i do i do think the card is really sweet and I would love to see more experimentation with Valgavoth. And the Constellation ability is definitely something where that can happen. But maybe it has to be like um, Storm the Festival style stuff, right? Where we're, we're able to hit it and it's a land we can hit off of a big thing like that. That we can do our Constellation triggers. And so it has utility outside of just being uh, dual land. Interesting. I'm going to have to think about it. Um, overall, though, this deck did not feel like aggressive enough um, to beat Lotus Field, which kind of sucked. Even I mean, we presented a turn four lethal one game and then lost very easily a few turns later. And we just lost to Enigmatic, which I think is somewhat indicative of the deck's weaknesses. Um, cheap interaction that is multi-dimensional in terms of what it can interact with coupled with some big end game that we don't have disruption for. And Lotus Field, Enigmatic are two very similar decks in that in that way where um, they have end games that are just like not really affected by a deck that says draw a bunch of cards. And we would much rather play against like um, Rakdos and Phoenix and things like that, I think. Um, with that said, I'm really not sure. But this deck seems really cool. If you want to give it a try yourself, check out our Mox Field page. Uh, you can check out my Mox Field page uh, video in the link description. Uh, in the video, there should be a link in the description. Uh, and you can check that out on moxfield.com. If you're watching this live, you can exclamation point deck or deck list and chat. Uh, we're sponsored by Apex Gaming, a store out of Caldwell, Ohio. They run a tournament series for their Apex Invitationals. And uh, Ross Mayer and myself do commentary. And we'll be heading back up there in November for the Invitational. We'll be doing last chance qualifiers as well. So if you don't know about it and you're interested... Check out apexgaming.gg for more info. We're sponsored by Paradise Games and Gifts. Paradise Games and Gifts is a store out of Fairfax, Virginia, specializing in trading card games like Wakana, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and Magic the Gathering. If you need some singles for your next event, check out Paradise Games and Gifts, and their website is gcparodice.com. gcparodice.com. They're formerly Games and Comics Paradise, but now they have changed their name to Paradise Games and Gifts. And we appreciate their support. I'm Tandy. I write articles on my Patreon for new decks, sideboard guides, uh, emphasis on RCQ formats. Um, we are currently testing for the regional championship in uh, October, in like a week and a half. And it um, should be a pretty fun event. Uh, but I'm doing sideboard guides on that. I've written a couple already. You can check out that at patreon.com slash Tandy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.